Hi, welcome back to Doug Sport. In this video, we're going to be getting the Mega Squared wired into the 100E Pinto Turbo. So I left off at the end of the last video, which in real time was just a few seconds ago, and uh, unfortunately not able to finish the body loom. So I'll probably pick that back up part way through this video when the missing parts turn up. For now though, I have decided I'm going to start work on lightening the Mega Squirt loom as it came out of the kit car a little bit heavier than it needed to be and uh, start getting it into the 100E. So, so far this morning I've been sat on the drive in a combination of rain and sun waiting for my delivery to arrive and while waiting, stripping out some wiring from the loom. So in this box I've been putting all the redundant wiring that I've stripped out of the Mega Squirt loom. Maybe if I'd done that first I wouldn't have run out of wiring for the body loom. It's starting to get a bit crowded in here now but I'll quickly show you the progress. Here I've got the two main relays for the uh, well, main relay board and the fuel pump relay for the fuel pump relay board. And obviously the ECU in. Uh, oh, got the plug in and then these trailer wires are a mess here are all trigger wires and then this pile of mess is all this crap so as you can probably tell from all of that wiring there there's still loads of stuff that i want to take out of this before uh, the loom is fully installed but better to have too much than not enough when you're using uh, shrink wrap and heat guns Put the heat gun somewhere sensible. After yesterday's drama with uh, the burn to my wrist, I decided uh, to take the rest of the afternoon off. Uh, but today I've been back out here and uh, carrying on with the wiring. So I've now got wiring run through into the engine bay and uh, now just setting about sort of sorting that into where it needs to go and doing it as tightly as possible. Inside the car, I swear it looks messier every time I touch it, but uh, it is getting there and there is some order to the mess. So hopefully by the time I've finished and everything's run to length and cables that I don't need cut out, um, it will all be really tidy and make sense under here. The more I work through this wiring and uh, look at what sort of needs to go where and how much wire I've got on everything, uh, the more I am starting to think it is time to crack out those bulkhead connectors and uh, start wiring stuff into those, which is not a job I'm looking forward to, but it's going to be totally worth it in the end. So for those who don't know what I'm on about, I've got two of these awesome bulkhead connectors, uh, the same as the ones used on Project Binky. If you don't know what Project Binky is, I'm going to put a link up here because you really need to go watch that. But anyway, these one all live there, and another one in that socket over there. And the whole point of those is it's going to allow me to uh, be able to very quickly disconnect all the wiring from the front end of the car. So if I need to pull the front clip off or need to pull the engine out, I can just undo two plugs, pull the whole thing out. Because I really don't want to start on those bulkhead connectors yet, I thought I would find some other little bits and pieces I can do to do with the wiring. And uh, one of those jobs is tidying up the injector subloom. So just doing that on the uh, old EFI inlet to help me get the spacing right and uh, that's what I've come up with. So a uh, little plug hidden away under there to go into the main loom and then each of the injector leads just tucking out nicely like that. So it's the same old loom as it was before, it's just tidied up. Uh, this was really nice and reliable, just looked a mess. So happy days. So I'm just about done for today, but I uh, had a, another quick little distraction to take care of. So I kept on saying I was going to cut this uh, this casting off, but I realised uh, with the turbo clocked like this, which I think I can make work, or even rotated around a little bit further, um, it still doesn't foul the bonnet. So I've made up this little plate to bolt in there instead. The idea is then that I'll, I'll mount my uh, Mac 3-port boost control solenoid, or maybe a 4-port if I can be persuaded to upgrade to one. So it'll be close then both to the source of the boost and to the wastegate. So that should work pretty nicely, make all of that stay nice and neat. I've started wiring up the bulkhead connector. 
doing the passenger side first where the bulk of the ECU wires come through and just had a delivery. I've got now the wiring that I was waiting for for the headlights and indicators. Um, I would have loved that yesterday before I started doing all this ECU stuff but uh, now that I'm in the middle of the ECU this stuff is going to have to wait. And I know somebody's going to ask why blue and purple and um, there was some thoughts behind it at the point of ordering it. I can't remember what those were now but there you go that's what we've got blue and purple. That is the first bulkhead connector done. One more of those to do and then just the two plugs. Absolutely destroying me doing these, just the concentration required to make sure I don't screw it up. And also remembering to, you know, note down what's going where. It's going to be totally worth it because they're going to be awesome. It might still look a bit of a mess, but that is all the bulkhead wiring on this side done. Still got to do that side though. Okay, so I've got that bulkhead connector now uh, pretty much finished. And I'll just show you what it's looking like. There you go. That's the first one done. I'm really happy with everything apart from that little bit of blue electrical tape, which is going to be replaced with a piece of black electrical tape just as soon as I find some or uh, buy some more. So that plug is almost completely wired up to the engine side as well. Just need to do the crank position sensor and the intake air temperature sensor. And that is then everything connected to that completely wired up actually would be enough for a first start but as I've got no fuel tank that's not going to happen yet. Another day out here working on the car it's blisteringly hot outside today and uh, as you can probably tell by the ticking sound what I've been working on is the indicators. I put in a fixed rate flasher unit that I'd used before and um, used it for a combination of LED and filament bulbs last time worked fine. For some reason this time it just does not want to seem to work with filament bulbs at all but um, I got an LED bulb so tried that and it works. So there you go, that's my indicator working. I'm sure some people are thinking, but indicators are orange. Um, well, because of the age of the car, um, the side light is normally the indicator on these, and so you are allowed a white flashing indicator. So that's what I'm going with. So I've wired both front indicators in and run the cabling up to the back of the car for the rear indicators. Uh, I need to get some LED lights for the back, because uh, again, Filament bulbs just don't work in there for some reason. I'm beyond caring as to why, as long as LEDs will work, I'm happy. Next thing I need to do is wire up the headlights and driving lights. It's really hot and uh, I, I don't think I can be bothered today. So all of the problems I was having with the indicators, the filament bulbs not working on the front and then not being able to get the rear lights working on filament bulbs, um, it was all down to how I'd got the warning light wired in. So I'll drop a little diagram here of how the warning light was wired in. So with this first setup where the um, need the LED bulbs in the front and the rear filament bulbs didn't work, what I didn't realise until I was packing up was that the warning lamp didn't work. Um, it had worked when I tested it, but then when I actually put the LED bulbs in the front, it stopped working. And that was all to do with the fact that um, the voltage drop across the bulb wasn't enough to make the bulb light up. I've now changed the wiring to this. And with this setup then, uh, the LEDs at the front work, the filament at the back work, and the warning light works. So, I'm happy. Uh, Easter Saturday now, and in between doing a bit of gardening, a bit of other bits and pieces, uh, I've come out and done a little bit more work on the car. And hopefully you can see I've made some progress on tidying up some of the wiring. So primarily over this side I've got now all of the headlighting indicator wiring coming through and sort of rooted and tidied up. That will all be covered in uh, the braided cloth stuff that I've used down there. As well as that, all the tail lights are now wired up uh, for brake driving and indicators. Um, I haven't got any number plate lights on yet, not sure if I'm going to. I don't think I need them for an MOT on this age of car, so I might give them a skip. Uh, at the same time, I've got some nice little LEDs that would look quite nice as rear number plate lights, so we'll see. And we're going again today having a little break from wiring. Uh, nearly done with the wiring now, but uh, just needed to do something productive other than wiring today. Uh, so I focused on a little bit of plumbing. Uh, so we've got the coolant and the oil lines plumbed in. So I've got the oil cooler 
on the uh, front tubular frame we have all the lines going down to the sandwich plate which is sitting down there and then also I think some pretty subtle coolant lines so you've got the turbo coolant line there down to a bulkhead connector on the underside of the firewall and also a coolant line here which is the one that comes out the intake manifold uh, into a bulkhead connector and also do this little map line to a bulkhead connector and the last bit in the engine bay got the main bottom rad hose connected up it needs jubilee clipping on it needs a jubilee clip on it still but it's just to kind of make sure it all fitted this I'm, I'm not happy with um, it's the basic route it needs to follow but kind of part of me wants to come out of here go 90 have this in the 90 and then another 90 here up and into there but I, just, I don't think that'll work um, that's what I'd like to do so the last bit of coolant hose I need to put in then is the one between here and here and for obvious reasons and um, I haven't done that one just yet then you get into the rat's nest so you've got the bulkhead connector coming in there to a t-piece from that t-piece into the back of the heater control out the back of the heater control up into the heater matrix out the heater matrix into another t-piece which links back to the first one and from there to the other bulkhead connector because that's really hard to follow, what that means is you've got the hot water coming in here from the engine into this T-piece, down to the heater control, which is basically a tap. So if that tap is closed, it'll go through that T-piece and back to the engine. If it's open though, it comes down through the tap, through the heater matrix, and out back to the engine. So it's been quite a productive day then on the car, getting those bits and pieces done and uh, yeah another couple of jobs ticked off the list so that's the wiring then almost complete on the car just a few little last jobs to do and then the whole tidying and covering it up so um i'm gonna call it there for this one and in the next video i will have all of that already finished before we move on to some other jobs so if you enjoyed the video please do give it a thumbs up and make sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell icon next to it not only does that mean you'll get notifications on when our future videos come out, it really helps the channel perform better on YouTube, so it would be really greatly appreciated. Again then, thank you for watching, catch you next time.